morning everybody my name is Carrie and I am a lead animal care specialist here at Brookfield Zoo in our hooved animal section and today we're going to be bringing the zoo to you and talking about our zebras um, so behind me here we have um, 11 year old Maipa who is hiding in the back there and five and a half year old Nyota um, Nyota was born here at Brookfield Zoo and Maipa comes to us from San Diego, um, but she's been in Chicago plenty long enough to uh, be well acclimated to our weather here. So as you can see, they don't seem to mind our snowy weather at all. It's pretty beautiful here at the zoo today, so um, I think they're enjoying it just as much as we are. So today, what we wanted to talk to you all about was um, why zebras have stripes. Um, it's a question that people have been exploring for over a hundred years, if you can believe that. Um, there's actual real science going on right now to help uh, answer these questions. It's not just sort of a rhetorical question. Um, so the, there's three um, sort of more widely accepted theories at the moment. Um, one of those is that those stripes offer the herd better protection. Um, and it's not so much like um, camouflage where they would blend in with their background, but rather that they would blend in with each other. So they do travel in herds and um, the theory is that it's more difficult for a predator to isolate an individual when they blend in with a big stripy herd. So um, that is one theory that people are exploring right now. Um, there are some challenges to that theory in that other, you know, sort of big herd animals don't have stripes and don't have camouflage and still manage to live safely in herds. Um, so that's one challenge. And then another challenge is that grevy zebras in particular have males that are solitary and territorial. So they don't necessarily have the protection of a herd, but yet they still are striped. So, um, so those are some of the challenges to that theory. Um, another theory is that it has to do with thermal regulation. Um, they have studied the temperature of the white stripes versus the black stripes and they have actually found that there are sort of different microclimates in, uh, you know, over a zebra's body. So the black stripes absorb the heat and the white stripes sort of radiate or, um, you know, defer the heat. So there's actually small currents that flow over a zebra's body to help theoretically with cooling. So, um, it makes sort of a mini little climate pattern over their body. It's difficult to test this theory. Um, they've tried testing with things like water barrels to see if striped water barrels um, regulate temperature differently than a solid colored water barrel. Um, and what's difficult about that is that it doesn't necessarily simulate what's going on with the zebras body um, because again you know there's differences in the hair structure like that black hair can actually stick up and become what's called piloerect um, so that it's absorbing more of the heat um, and that obviously that's something that does not happen you know just on a water barrel so so those theories are ongoing. Um, and again, some of the challenges to that theory are that other animals in similar climates and similar habitats do not have stripes and also are able to maintain their thermal regulation without any challenge. So that is something that's being explored. Um, one of the most popular theories that's out there right now is that uh, the stripes help to deter biting flies um, there are a couple different species of biting flies in zebras natural habitats and what they have found is that there's something associated with fly vision that makes it difficult for them to land on a zebra. Um, they don't land smoothly onto a zebra, they sort of flop and stumble around. So. 
um, the suspicion is that uh, those stripes interfere with the flies sort of navigating properties. So it makes them, it doesn't make them less attractive to the flies, it just makes it harder for the fly to grab on and bite. Um, and that too is still being challenged. Um, they've done some experiments with uh, horses where they've either painted stripes on or put on, um, you know, they make coats for horses, they put on striped coats. Um, and they have discovered a similar effect with, um, you know, the horses with painted stripes that those flies have a difficult time landing on them. So that's just one of the experiments that they're running right now to see if that theory is true. Um, I can say just with my experience here at the zoo, the, the zebras do, do still get bit by flies in the summertime, um, but they definitely are less bothered by flies than some of the other animals we have here in our hooved animal section. Um, they don't get bothered nearly as much as some of the other animals we have out here. Um, that being said, some of our fly traps that our pest control representatives offer for us are striped <laughs> and they say that um, that striped pattern is attractive to biting flies. So, um, <laughs> you know, they've done some experiments to see what is most attractive to, you know, specifically the biting flies that we have in this region and um, that is something that they have found. So. Again, there's more science that has to uh, get fished out to determine specifically why zebras do have stripes, but so those are some of the uh, reigning theories. Um, and interestingly, um, the different zebra species are not necessarily all very closely related. They're all part of the equus genus, so um, they are all related to horses, but um, the grubby zebras that we're looking at here are more closely related to donkeys, whereas the plain zebras and mountain zebras are more closely related to horses. Um, but despite that, both of those um, different zebra types have developed stripes. So, so th there's a lot of science that still needs to happen to determine why these specific animals have evolved to have stripes. But so far, those are the reigning theories. Um, some interesting things about the stripes, um, those stripes do form while the zebra is still forming in, in utero. So as a fetus, a very young fetus, they develop stripes. So it is a very distinguishing characteristic of um, their physiology. Um, and also it, it is true that each zebra has unique stripes. So it is something that we use to identify our zebras here. Um, so I can point out on Nyota, who is the one that's in front that we can see most clearly. Um, on each of her cheeks, she has a little spot on her cheek and um, that helps break up her stripe pattern and it's also a really easy distinguishing feature for us to see. Um, they also tend to have um, some interesting swirls sort of on their rumps. So that's another area that we look at, sort of the middle of their thigh area is something that we look at to um, identify those different stripe patterns. The, and some, some people speculate that zebras themselves use the stripe pattern to identify individuals, um, that offspring would memorize the stripe pattern of their mother. Um, but again, there's no easy way to test that. So. That is just speculation at this point. How many species of zebra are there? That also is a hotly debated, uh, I say hotly debated as if it's, <laughs> you know, something that's popular in culture, but um, in the scientific community, it's still being debated. Um, generally speaking, there are three different widely accepted species, uh, the grubby zebra, the plain zebra, and the mountain zebra. But then there's still some discussion, um, especially in regards to the plain zebra and the mountain zebra, how many subspecies there are. Are they related to okapi? They are not related to okapi. Um, so if, if you were looking more at like generalized farm animals, 
Uh, zebras are more related to horses, whereas okapi would be more closely related to a cow. Ooh. How fast can they run? That is a great question that I didn't study before <laughs> we got here. Um, they can run very fast for short periods of time. Um, my guess would be 45 miles an hour for short periods of time. Sorry guys, I'm just scrolling through the comments. Um, so do researchers in Africa use the stripes as a way to, to tell different animals apart as well? They do, um, and actually there's some pretty cool technology right now that maps out the stripe patterns for them. Um, so they can use a photo of an animal and it enters into a database and spits out the identification of that animal for them. And how much do they weigh? Um, these girls, um, we weigh them in kilograms. So if I'm translating into pounds, like generally speaking, they weigh between like 700 and 900 pounds. And Nyota is closer to that 900 pound range, whereas Maipa is a shorter animal and she is closer to like the, you know, 750 range. How can you tell the three different species of zebra apart? That's a good question. So the grubby zebra is, um, significantly larger than the other two species. Those species are more in like the five to 700 pound range. Um, whereas again, these guys are in the seven to 900 pound range. So they're significantly larger. Um, the grubby zebra stripe pattern is different than the other two in that they're um, much more narrow. And um, they, the grubby zebras don't have stripes that meet all the way to their bellies. So their bellies are white. Um, they also, their ears are a distinguishing factor because the grubby zebras have a very large rounded ear. We, you know, we sort of refer to them as like the Mickey Mouse ears, whereas the other two species have um, a smaller ear that is pointed at the tip. Um, now the mountain and plain zebras occupy different ranges, so that's a big distinguishing factor for them. Um, Obviously, the mountain zebra occupies higher elevations. Um, and the mountain zebras tend to have what's called like shadow striping in their, um, especially like in their hind quarters, where in between the, um, you know, like a black, white, black pattern is like sort of a gray stripe that runs through the middle of the white stripe. Oh, look. She's gonna <laughs> stop hogging the limelight. Um, what is their diet like? Um, they are herbivores. So primarily what they eat is grass. Um, that makes up the bulk of their diet. Um, so here at the zoo, they get grass hay. And um, we change that hay type seasonally to sort of reflect the different um, seasonal patterns that they would experience in their native habitats. Um, here at the zoo, they also get um, some grain products and um, some fruits and veggies that they enjoy too. How many zebras are here at Brookfield Zoo? We have three zebras here at the zoo now. Um, these are our two females, Nyota and Maipa. And then we also have a male who is Maipa's offspring. And um, he is in a different um, section of our hooved animal stretch here. Uh, do we participate here at Brookfield Zoo? Do we participate in the Grevy Zebra SSP, Species we, Survival Program? We do. Um, so Grevy Zebras are managed as a species survival program, which means that um, we track the genetics of all of these animals and sort of make love matches accordingly. So um, right now there are just under 200 Grevy Zebras in North America as of the last breeding and transfer plan that came out, but that was several years ago. So um, that may not be exactly current, but it's around 200 individuals. And so what the SSP does is they look at the genetics of those 200 individuals and we move animals between zoos to um, capitalize on optimal genetic matches. What are their hooves made of? Their hooves are made of keratin, like the outside of the hoof, 
um, sort of that hoof wall is made of keratin, which is very similar to our fingernails. Um, but then there is a much more complex hoof structure underneath that that involves um, some bone and connective tissue. Do you have to trim the hooves at all? Generally speaking, we do not have to trim zebra hooves. Um, unlike domestic horses, they are really very good at keeping their hooves trim on their own. Um, we do use a substrate in the yard that is abrasive that wears that hoof down over time to help um, prevent overgrowth from happening. Um, but we have, we have had situations where we have had to do hoof trims on zebras and in those situations it involves a medical procedure with our veterinary staff. Is either of these the latest baby that was born? Neither of these is the latest baby that was born. So Nyota, who is, um, she, she's, <laughs> she's on my left. <laughs> I don't know how that translates for you guys. Um, but she's the one that's closer to us. Nyota was born here uh, five and a half years ago. Uh, but Haru was the most recent foal that was born here and he um, is in a different area that we can't see right now. So are there, let's see, I think you already touched on this a little bit. I wasn't listening too closely. Um, are there hooves just like horses then? Yes, their hooves okay. are, yeah, it's a very similar structure to a horse. Though. Okay. And uh, why do they have two toes? They do not have two toes. Um, the, all, all equids are um, odd toed ungulates. Um, and so all equids only just have one toe on each foot. Um, and that is actually like a pretty special modification that occurs um, through the evolution of like that whole lower limb. So they have what's called sort of a cannon bone um, where like the small bones that would be in our, um, our hands and in our feet have all sort of, you know, developed into one solid bone. And then those other toes that would have come off of that have developed just into like one single bone that's in their foot. Do you have to uh, cut their manes? We do not. Um, they they have that pretty rock and mohawk all on their own. Um, and when they're when they're young, it's really sort of fun and fuzzy, and um, it just sort of goes all over. But as they age, it gets more sort of trim all on its own. What kinds of noises do they make? Um, they bray like a donkey. Um, and I would love to be able to replicate it for you, but I have, I have not yet been able to uh, nail that one down, but it sounds very much like a donkey. So if you're here at the zoo one day and you think you're hearing a donkey, it's one of the Grevy zebras. And they are very loud. It's very loud. You can hear it, you know, down our whole entire hoofed animal stretch here. Usually they do it when we're too slow getting their breakfast ready. <laughs> So I do have a uh, fun joke for you guys as we're wrapping up. Uh, what's white and red and black all over? A zebra with sunburn. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us today for bringing the zoo to you. We'd so appreciate all of your support as the zoo is closed right now. Um, we're really excited to be able to continue to connect you with uh, wildlife and nature.